Combat Theory presents. All right, what's up, guys? We're doing a special bonus episode um, that should be posting today, Friday, which uh, I'm looking at is going to be September 22nd. And we've never done an episode like this before. I think it's going to be very, very exciting. Um, <laughs> I'm joined by a couple of people today. Obviously, I have my good friend and now, I guess, co-host of the show, Richard Grendel. Rich Grendel, what's up, man? Not much. Excited for this uh, bonus episode. Bonus episode. We've never done one before. We'll see how it goes. And then I also have to my right, if you're watching at home, which might actually be on the left of the screen, um, is Angeline Levitt. How you doing, Ange? I'm doing good. Is the is the mic? Do you need to pull the mic down a little bit, or are you are you comfortable there? Not that way. Nope. Nope. By the, by the yep. Perfect. Oh yeah, I'm good. You good? Okay. Maybe we'll cut that out. Maybe we won't. I don't know. We're, we're not known for our professional podcasting. Okay. So what we are doing today, guys, um, Rich, we just did an episode that posted on Tuesday about um, judging, all things judging. And in that episode, we talked about how incredibly rare it is to get a draw. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after we posted that episode, but you know, we recorded and then it was posted later, obviously, as that, that's how the internet works. Um, the UFC Flyweight Championship with Valentina Shevchenko and Alex Alexa Alexa Grasso is it Grasso 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 I, oh, I hate myself now we say um, just happened on Saturday uh, and it got a draw uh, a split draw specifically which we can talk about I guess later if we yeah. want so what we thought would be really fun is that we're going to the three of us are going to watch the episode or the episode the fight together and we're going to score it so we're gonna do a little bit of color commentary so if you're watching at home you can kind of watch it with us. It's it's uh, free on ESPN Plus. If you have ESPN Plus, uh, you can actually go right to the fight. They have a clip of it. And uh, you can watch the fight with us um, if you're watching from home. And you can kind of listen to our color commentary. And then at the end of the entire fight, we're going to tell you our score. We're going to score it. We're going to keep it to ourselves round by round like any judges would. And um, I'm going to give some statistics. And then I think Rich is going to take it away. So Shevchenko has fought at least 89 times okay now her record's one of those records where it's questionable because she's had um i think about about 20 or 30 mma fights but then she also fought kickboxing she also fought professional boxing she also fought mma she won a bunch of titles as an amateur so as you know that doesn't count towards your pro record never had a draw uh grazo same deal she has actually 20 mma fights um, she is a, a brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I want to say. So she's competed in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But uh, uh, record-wise, she doesn't have any pro kickboxing or pro um, boxing that I'm aware of, or at least that's listed. Um, they originally fought March 4th, 2023. Um, and Grasso actually was able to beat Shevchenko with a what they called the deemed to be a face crank uh, submission at the end of the fourth round. Um and I think that covers all of the stuff that I want to say. Rich. Yeah. Let's talk about. No, so we have a special guest today, mm-hmm. Angeline. Ange. You like to go by Ange, yes? Yeah. Yeah. We have Ange. Ange, have you ever seen a fight before? No. No. Have you ever seen a fight in real life? Yeah. Where at? At Walmart. At Walmart. Okay. This episode is not sponsored by Walmart <laughs> or by Diet Coke. But if they want to sponsor. Yeah. I mean, I'm, listen, Walmart, you have the best fights. Yeah. Um, so we have, we have Ange who is a, a less than a, rich earlier described her as what? Uh, less than a casual, less than a casual fan as Ange has never seen a fight. Don't, before. don't take that offensive. Please. No, no. It's yeah. just, this is, this is, a, this that's, is a, that's a label we would use. <laughs> this is a scientific experiment. If less than a casual fan can score the fight based on the criteria. So rich is going to explain the criteria and even how to score because we've done none of that explanation yet for Ange. Yeah, so again, if you listen to the previous episode, we spoke in depth about judging, but it was for kickboxing, Muay Thai, and MMA, yeah. and I encouraged everyone to listen to the unified rules scoring criteria, Read which them, is what yes. we use mm-hmm. here in the U.S. Okay. So every sanctioning body in the whole country has to go by this criteria. It's three pieces, okay? So, Ange, I'm explaining it to you, but listeners, if you haven't heard this, you can find it online. So we go three criteria. Number one, number two, number three. Hopefully, we're deciding by number one. Number two, we'll go to if we can't decide by number one. And then number three, we'll go to if we can't decide either one of those. We're not adding them up. We're going by the top first, then the second, then the third. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, that's why we practice. So (laughs) 
So I'm going to give you the number one, the number two, the number three. It's going to be a little bit of rambling, so try to stay with me. If there's words we're using you don't understand, again, that takes a long time. So number one is effective striking slash grappling. This means we want to score what we deem the most effective striking, that's punches, kicks, knees, and elbows, or and or the effective grappling, which is the ability to hold a position, whether it's on the ground, on the cage, how long you hold it, and what you do in that position. Okay? So, that being said, effective striking slash grappling defined is legal blows that have immediate or cumulative impact with the potential to contribute towards the end of the match with the immediate weighing in more heavily than the cumulative impact. Successful execution of takedowns, submission attempts, reversals, and the achievement of advantageous positions that produce immediate or cumulative impact with the potential to contribute to the end of the match with the immediate weighing more heavily than the cumulative impact. That's a lot of words, right? We're yeah. halfway through the first criteria. <laughs> the second part of this first criteria, effective striking slash grappling. It shall be noted that a successful takedown is not merely a changing, or I'm sorry, is not merely a changing of position, but the establishment of an attack from the use of the takedown. Top and bottom position fighters are assessed more on the impact slash effective result of their actions more so than their positions. This criterion will be the deciding factor in a high majority of decisions when scoring a round. The next, two, uh, the next two criteria must be treated as a backup and only used when effective striking slash grappling is 100% equal of the round. Gotcha. So Any does, questions on that? Yeah. So, like, does different like hits have are there like a point system here so, good question so there's no like hierarchy of what is more value than the other we're looking for what has the most impact the way they defined impact if you give me a moment so this is another again if you guys follow the unified rules uh if you go to mmareferee.com you can find the unified rules scoring criteria impact basically is uh, I guess I'll read the whole thing. Is that is that fair? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, okay. you know, well, it's not. This well, is the most our, important our thing we're looking for. Thing. And in this fight, I believe there's a great deal of impact. I I guess we should also note that Paul has not watched this fight. I, have, yet. I haven't seen the fight. And I also haven't seen it. She's never watched the fight. Never. Right? Yeah. And has never watched a professional yeah. MMA fight, especially of this caliber. And then I myself did watch this fight, but watched it as a fan. I wasn't really trying to judge. Okay. I might be the most biased one here. I also had Why? a big meal before this. You did have a big meal. Yeah, so. I got punched before I got here. Oh, which nice. Which is not nice. common. Um, so this isn't like us being best judging, but we're going to do our best off of learning this criteria. So impact, okay? The number one thing we're looking for in effective striking grappling, which is the first criteria we're going for, right? Impact. A judge shall assess if a fighter impacts their opponent significantly in the round, even though... They may have not dominated the action. Impact includes visible evidence such as swelling and lacerations. I got you. So cool. like on Brawl, the little percentage at the bottom when you're hurting someone. What is Brawl? Oh, you're talking about a Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'm with yeah, you. In, in a way, but yeah. instead of a bar we look at, we look at the person's body. Their There's, face, their body. There'll be no legs. bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bar is the blood or the, the swelling that comes from their cuts and such. Got you, got cool. you. All right, so impact includes visible evidence such as swelling and lacerations. Impact shall also be assessed when a fighter's actions using striking and or grappling lead to a diminishing of their opponent's energy, confidence, abilities, and spirit. How do you measure those things? By watching. Yeah. So it's kind of subjective, right? Like we're watching it and we have to determine whether or not your actions are affecting my spirit or my energy or my <laughs> confidence. I think when you also, watch a fight, you can kind of see in, a, in a, a fight where one person's definitely winning, you can see their confidence is building and the other person's confidence is decreasing. We should be able to see we'll that. See that. We'll see that. We'll see that. I haven't seen the fight, so I have yeah. no idea. Um, 
All of these come as a direct result of impact. When a fighter is impacted with strikes by lack of control and or ability, this can, cre this can create defining moments in the round and shall be assessed with great value. So we're looking for things, strikes and or grappling that physically changes the person's body or how they're acting. Gosh, you. Is this a bad... Is it, I should probably mention that Ange has a, an aversion to blood. Oh. <laughs> I don't think this is a bloody one. No, I don't okay, think we get bloody right. in this right. one. All right. Yeah, so we get lucky there. Now, I, I want to point out, there's two other parts of the first scoring criteria. Okay, all right. I'm not going to read them entirely, but I will note them. All right, so we have impact. The next part is dominance. And then the part after that is duration. Okay. Okay, so basically meaning impact is the physical changes we can see in a person's uh, well-being, whether Spirit. it's physically or how they're acting. Yep. Okay. Blood, broken bones, birdies. Birdies. Yeah, birdies. I like that. Yeah, birdies yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dang, that might be a call I use birdies, in the corner yeah. now. Oh, he's seeing birdies. Yeah, they used to say this thing about being on a certain street mm -hmm. that they don't say anymore. What kind okay, of street? Yeah. you know what I'm talking about yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I hear and you. they haven't found a way to replace that. Birdies might be it. Might be like he's seeing birdies. Okay. Yeah. Good job, Ange. This is why. Uh, for those who like heard like oh and just never watched the fight we shouldn't listen to her i always go with new students have the best takes on things well she has no bias she's minute. got no yeah. bias whatsoever exactly. she doesn't care she's she has no bias bottle. on yeah. striking versus grappling she's got no bias on either of their camps 100 she has she's never seen either of them fight before so she doesn't really care yep no bias here we're just we're telling the rules and seeing if an average person can judge yeah when you asked if this is a good idea i said absolutely i think this is a better idea than Getting some guy who's wrestled his whole life, or another person yeah. who's a black belt, you know, or, or or someone that's trained with with either of them, or had sure. someone fight against either of them, sure. So again, impact, right? That's what we're looking for. That's number one. Then we go to dominance, and basically what that just states is, uh, dominance and striking is I'm just landing with a lot of force, or I'm landing a lot. I want to give the higher value to the harder force, and then if there's not a decisive on that, then I go to who's like essentially. Uh, scoring more also on the flip side of that in the grappling area um dominance in the grappling phase can be seen by the fighters taking dominant positions in the fight and utilizing those positions to attempt fight ending submissions or attacks again you're not going to be very well versed in what positions mean what but you're going to kind of see how uh long they can keep a position there that's going to be duration and then dominance is how much they can do in those positions but first and foremost is impact that's where we probably will spend most of the time watching yeah. this fight, deciding on it, the impact of the fighters. Now, if we can make a decision on effective striking and grappling alone, that's what we're looking to do. Yes. But if we find it 100% equal, then we're going to look at the next one, which is effective aggressiveness. This is scoring criteria number two. So effective aggressiveness, these are much easier to explain. Aggressively making attempts to finish the fight. The key term is effective. Chasing after an opponent with no effective result or impact should not render in the judge's assessments. Effective aggressiveness is only to be assessed if effective striking slash grappling is 100% equal for both competitors. Okay. Again, as I stated before, we are not adding these together. I'm not adding the effective aggressiveness plus the effective striking and grappling. If it's equal effective striking and grappling, then I'm looking at effective aggressiveness. Just stating that. Fight area control, the third criteria. Fighting area control is assessed by determining who is dictating the pace, place, and position of the match. Fighting area control shall only be assessed if effective striking grappling and effective aggressiveness is 100% equal for both competitors. This will be assessed very rarely. And they state that because we should not be deciding this fight off of fight area control or octagon control. Any questions, Ange? Not really. I mean, I can see how it would be really hard to actually have a draw. Yeah. So the, the way a draw can come up can come up in a bunch of different ways. The way a draw came up in this fight, and we can probably discuss that more when we give our scores, but a way a draw came up in this fight was one judge gave it to one fighter, another judge gave it to another fighter, and then one judge said, draw. He thought the fight was equal based on how he scored the fight. Which is the most rare draws, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. 
And as you stated, neither fighter has seen a draw in their career. Yeah. As a fighter and as a corner, you're kind of judging the fight while you're there. So we'll see probably throughout uh, the the fighters and the coaches kind of figuring out where they're at in the match. Yeah. Am I up? Am I down? So, All right. So any questions? Do you have any questions? Okay. Last thing. Yeah. I, I wrote this down for you. Yes. If you thought the round was even, you have red corner and you have blue corner. Okay. The way that you can tell is see how Grasso on the left there has got red tape on her gloves. Yeah. And Shevchenko over there in all white has blue tape on her gloves. Harder to see right now. Okay. Okay. So after the round, you're going to score it. Okay. And you have four ways that you can score it. If you think they are exactly even... You're mm-hmm. going to put 10 for red, 10 for blue. Make sense? Yeah. If you think that one of them was above, but not significantly above, you're going to give 10 points to one round and nine to the other corner. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. That would be the most common thing you're going to do is called the 10-9 round. If you think that the one person really significantly beat the other person, you would then go to what's called a 10-8 round. I put, I put major advantage. And then if you think that there was they really were ahead, you'd go ten seven, which is would be a massive advantage to the point that you're survived that the other person sur- survived the round. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions about this? Got you. So there's five rounds. Five rounds. R one, R two, R three, R four, R five. Five minutes. Five minutes. This is a twenty five minute fight. So we're you know, buckle up. We're cooking. We're cooking. Yeah. And we're going to talk whatever we want about the fight during the fight, but you can't tell us what you have a score. And then once you give your score, just flip it over so we don't see it. Now, last question. How do they decide who sponsors these things? You Whoever pays the most amount of money. Yeah. And I'm going to do a countdown. So if you're watching at home, you can watch along with us. And we are going to re- get ready to start the fight. Everybody ready here? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we are hitting play right now. Fight. So I'm going to count down for you. That is 40, 456, 455, 454, 453, 451, 450. All right. We're watching round one. So, yeah, we're, you know, beginning of a fight, it's usually uh, not a lot of uh, action, but we already have uh, three clean strikes on Shevchenko's side. That was clean. That was a clean cross. What do they call their, like, outfits? Fight kits. Fight kits. Yeah, like soccer, like a fight kit. The white one's so unfortunate. <laughs> okay, you're not you're not a fan of Shevchenko's outfit there? Yeah, no. Rich, you're, you're not a Shevchenko fan, right? I love Shevchenko. Why would you think I'm not a fan? Who who are you? Are, are you is that the reason you, it's hard for you to make a clear choice? No. you just way ahead on her? Or? Um, I don't know what you mean. I mean, do you have do you have a bias for either of them? No, I have a bias only in the sense that I um watched the fight already. Oh, okay. So like, right, I cool. might I might change my opinion on who oh, I thought okay. was. Uh, now that we're kind of analyzing it differently. So this was this fight was fought on Mexican Independence Day. You're telling me? Yeah. So one of uh so again the fight ended in a split draw. So Shevchenko pointed out that she felt the judges felt pressured to give Grasso rounds because of the hype they built around this Mexican Independence Day and that Grasso got a special belt made for her for being um, from Mexico. Interesting. Which, you know, it's, you all, don't, it's all possible. It's all it's, possible. It's, we're all human, and the judges, you mm-hmm. know, I think the judge in question was Mike Bell, and he's got a history of uh, bad decision-making. So maybe that's influenced him, or maybe he's just a bad judge. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll definitely. Uh... Now, FYI, normally judges should not be having conversations, but uh, if you guys are going to sit here with us for twenty five minutes, we decided that we would have some conversation throughout. So again, the big thing we're looking for, uh, Ange, is impact. So, mm-hmm. you know, the amount of strikes should not matter. It should be the amount of Stuff strikes that. that strikes or grappling that really wears out or damages uh, the opponent. Now, if you guys remember, as I read the thing, we never heard the word damage. I want to point that out. But we're probably, if you're listening with the commentators, they're probably going to say damage a lot throughout this fight. That is a product of striking, but we're not looking just for striking. We're looking for impact. Ooh, that was clean. Guys, if you were following along, we are at 212, 211, 210, 209, 208, round one. 
Mm. Does it? I DC just saying that Alexa's jab is uh, doing more damage. I I don't know that I see that. But you know that we got to talk about something. So I Alexa understand is it. in black. Yes, she yes. is. Red corner Alexa in black. Now, the rumor is, or not the rumor, I guess, but the, the at some point during this fight, Valentina breaks her thumb, which is the most common injury uh, that MMA fighters have during fights. Is uh, not most most common break, I should say, is the thumb break. I don't know which hand it is. I could probably look that up, but if she does break her thumb, which is now going to require surgery. So obviously, one of the things that Shevchenko, I bet you, was right there. Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, she broke her thumb at some point. I bet she was right there. Sometimes when people do those um, double underhook takedowns and they mm. land on their hand, yeah, that's a violent hand land. Oh, yeah. I broke a, a – not, not grappling, but playing rugby. I tackled someone, and it was from them landing on top of my hand. <sighs> I mean, Very okay, uh, you know, Val- Valentina got the takedown there. Mm-hmm. She's on top. She's in mount. Yep. She's, she's going to back – she's got back – yeah, so again, um, these are all really great positions, right? But how do you score when positions are not uh, what is being looked at when it's impact? Positions is just a momentary thing. What she did in those positions is what we should fair, be looking at. Fair, fair. So, may- so maybe, okay. Now, already- not to say the grappling did not impact the fight, right? It, didn't, it may have impacted the opponent. We have to determine that. It looks like they're like barely touching each you're not, other. You're with not. The you're knees. talking around the mic. You have to talk into the mic. It yeah. looks like they're barely touching each other with the knees. Yeah, but they're using light knees, right? So they can keep position. They're not uh, hitting super hard because they, if they go super hard, they might lose where they're at. Okay, so now we have to score the round. We're not going to say uh, what we scored the round. Um, Remember, we're looking for scores of 10-9, 10-8, or 10-7. Or even 10-10. 10-10 if you thought it was a draw. If, if that's how you feel. So, as as a judge, you get one minute to score this. And typically what they would do is, um, as a pro, you're going to have one card per round. So, I'm going to score round one, and then someone's going to come and collect that card from me. So, I don't get uh, more than maybe 20, 30 seconds to write down my score and circle who I thought won the round. Round by round, they're going to collect my scorecard. And if you if you want to put like additionally on your card, um, why you gave it that round, or we can explain it later. Yeah. That's fine too. Yeah, I'm making little. Notes. All right, so we're starting off on the round two, and I'll give you a count. 456, 455, 454, 453, 452, 451, 450. So let's let's you know let's look to see if um, Shevchenko's thumb seems to be impaired or if she's not throwing it. I mean, obviously she's taped and gauzed into her gloves. I'm so gonna be I, I'm gonna be honest. I wish you didn't tell me that. Yeah. Because now I'm gonna be looking for that as opposed to just like. Well, I'm curious because I I hate to say this because I wonder how much of that is an excuse. Mm. versus how much of that is just, you know, legitimately she was affected because her thumb was broken. Yeah. But maybe she doesn't even know her thumb is broken. But for her to say, yeah, I broke my thumb in the first, that would say to me that she knew after the first that her thumb was broken. Yeah. The one thing I do not like about these when they have the commercial break is you don't see what's going on in the corner. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, as a judge, that doesn't matter. But as a, as a fan, as a coach... Yeah. I'm curious I mean, to see if they were discussing her thumb in the corner. And I guess we should explain that. As a judge, uh, like I said, you have that minute break in between rounds to write out your score, and you have to hand it in. I don't get much. The round's over, so I don't get much time, so I can't really watch them in the corner. And we're not really supposed to either. We're not so, ooh. ooh. Was that a slip, you think? It looked like a clean knockdown. Clean knockdown. Yeah, it looked like mm, a right hook. Interesting. She was interesting. Out. So, as we've seen it, we can all agree that was the most significant thing that's happened this fight. This round, for sure, yeah. Well, of this round, for sure. You Second know, round. You could make an argument about whether or not the takedown in the first this has is all oh, clean scoring. Yeah, this is all clean. 
She this might see. I'm thinking right now this might not continue. Wow, she took a little bit. Of, she took a little beating there. Yeah, there was a solid. Yeah, you know, that ten was, to twelve. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You know, knees, elbows, and punches. That was oh, well timed takedown. Well timed. Listen, say what you want about Shevchenko, but she has been in the game a very long time. Absolutely. Now, we're not, you know, this is a stalemate. Neither person is really doing anything that can impact the fight that would lead to a finish, right? If you know jiu-jitsu, you know Grosso can't really do much with double overhooks the, on both arms. Yeah, bombs. the head in. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. And, you know, again, maybe these grappling exchanges may affect one person's confidence slash spirit slash energy. Um, but, you know, and her time will tell. Now. And if you're watching from home, we are at 213, 212, 211. 210. And again, we just got blessed with a uh, small screen replay at the bottom left of the knockdown. Judges do not get that. And as Paul alluded to when he was watching it live, he said, was that a slip? Now, a judge, depending on where they're sitting, may have read that as it, a slip. You know, slip. she got up so quickly. Yeah. She, like, rolled she through rolled it. She rolled with it. It yeah. could have been a slip. If this was Muay Thai or kickboxing, would you have given an eight on that? Um, It would... If the ref called it, which I think in, if it was Muay Thai or kickboxing, a ref probably would have called that if he had you would have called on that it. an eight count. He would have called that a, a knockdown. So. That's what I'm saying. Would you yeah. have given that an eight count? Yeah, that's an eight. That's a knockdown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where MMA becomes unique mm -hmm. in the fact that in Muay Thai or kickboxing, that would have been a mandatory eight. That axe kick would have been pretty if it landed. Yeah. It could it couldn't go to the head though. It could only go to the body, so I'm not right. really exactly sure. Yeah, it's a tough weapon to target. Yeah, that would have been that's a weird one. It's a great I think it's a great way to set up a pass, but you don't often see that. I'm surprised that Grasso or that Shevchenko didn't let Grasso stand back up. Yeah, but again, she got she got dropped right, so she may have felt like she was winning the exchanges on the feet up until that knockdown. Um, but again, if you're paying attention, even though Shevchenko's on top, even though she's finding herself to be punching every so often, she hasn't really done much to slow Grasso down. Now, to the point, I've had some people argue: if a fighter's on their back and they have opportunities to stand up, do you score that against them? Because they have the opportunity to get out of there. Why don't they get out of there? Are they impacted? Not to confuse. <laughs> but that's the, the choices you have to make. Yeah, the first half of that versus the second half of that round was... I don't know. It's going to be an interesting one to score, guys. And I, I kind of want to bring up a point of the criteria. Um, but I don't want to sway your judging. So score your score, your score and then I'll bring up a part of the criteria all right flip your sheet over there yeah there we go all right so uh as we read especially in the beginning part of the effect of striking grappling mm -hmm. they want to favor uh the immediate as opposed to the accu the cumulative so meaning if something was close to finishing the fight that made immediate impact leading to the end of the fight we want to score that higher than what would be viewed as like more duration or dominance we want that big impact is what we're looking for. And, again, uh, we get this beautiful replay. Again, though, on a judge's – I think that the, actually the more telling story is the is what occurred after. the um, After that knockdown, uh -huh. Agrasso goes into the corner, and, and she – there's probably about 15 or 20 seconds in that round that Valentina goes with – is unanswered with her. She's getting beat up a little yeah. bit. Interesting. We'll see. Grasso was the underdog in this fight. Yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, <sighs> believable just because Shevchenko was so dominant for so long. As Ange pointed out, Shevchenko is the older fighter, 35 versus 30. Isn't Alexa also a jiu-jitsu girly? Yeah. So she, would... She has... I w if you were to describe her style, it's like boxing and jiu-jitsu. Yeah, that's a fair point. Because I feel like that'd be like... 
one reason why she may have decided to stay on the ground so long. Great point. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying is that she didn't necessarily, she wasn't affected, but she just felt more comfortable down there and wanted to take the fight there probably. Yeah. Shevchenko is known for her for for her striking, obviously. Wherein Grasso is, I think Grasso is probably known for being an MMA fighter, which is something that didn't really exist, you know, a long time ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Shevchenko is a lifelong martial artist. I don't know what age Grasso started at, but we've known Shevchenko to be doing it since you know a young yeah, child. Yeah. She went to uh, college for uh, ballet, I think, or some kind of Russian dance. Interesting. Um, and then she, because she has a, f- a fine arts degree in dance. Interesting t- takedown attempt by by Shevchenko. And she's holding her down. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. The stand up exchanges on the feet, you know, they're kind of like one and done on both sides. They were they were throwing one strike, the other one maybe countered or waited, and uh, earlier in the the previous two rounds, they were kind of putting things together a little more. So there's a is that submission in? attempt. Okay, so that is a legitimate submission attempt. And if right I'm there. on this angle as a judge, that looks I'm very definitely tight. counting that. If that I'm on the other side, tight. I don't know 100%. So, Andrew, if you don't know, that looks that looks like a fight-ending submission attempt. She's mounted. Uh, she has her hands look like they are locked. She is squeezing her, her carotid arteries on either side of her neck very tightly. That is a, a mounted guillotine. Which is one of my favorite moves. I mean, this is very hard to get out of. Very tight. Now, you could just stand up. <laughs> it should be that easy. Sorry, Ange. That's a inside uh, inside fighter joke. <laughs> that is a very tight choke. Nope. Oh, and she out. gives up Shout on out. it. Remains in a great position though. Goes the back. Now, obviously, that doesn't. She got a body triangle. That's tight. So this is great, obviously, for Shevchenko having uh, a less than stellar performance in the second round, just in that knockdown. But obviously, she finished well with the grappling attempts. Interesting, too, because she lost by submission in the first. So you, like, you think that she would avoid this. Avoid this. But yeah. she, she obviously seems, seems very comfortable. And, and that could just be very much like her, her training camp. Because she lost in the grappling. They she knew that she'd spent a lot of time grappling. So why not get good at it? It's not like Shevchenko historically has bad grappling. Side note, she was uh, Shef- uh, Valentina Shevchenko was training at Smiley Academy in Jacksonville, Florida. We, we've been there. And I know uh, some of the fighters out of there traveled to Vegas to finish up her camp with her. Valentina's got a very interesting um, kind of training thing where she, she essentially travels around and she doesn't really have a home gym. Although I, I know that she does claim tiger Muay Thai, uh, in, in, um, Thailand as her home gym. I see her post about tiger a lot, but you know, I've seen her training all over Florida. Yeah. So her and her coach and her sister, although I don't know if her sister was really involved in this camp, is her sister still fighting? Oh, I imagine. Yeah. I know her sister. I just, don't know if she's still signed with the UFC. Her sister just got her uh, commercial pilot's license. Congratulations. Yeah, they were very excited about it. Antonia? Yeah, Antonia, Ant- Antonia I think. I should know that because I've, I've actually trained with both of them. Nice. So this is a pretty wicked position. Um, the pressure that's on Grasso is surely uncomfortable. Her ribs are probably yeah. not feeling great there. But she does do a nice way of reversing to get in top guard. It, I'm I'm interested if the if the submission arm attempt to set now two now two submission attempts, right, arm bar attempt right at the end. God. Oh, okay. You can see why this is a controversial fight. All right, let's score this, and then let's talk about it real quickly. Yeah, I'm scored. All right, we're all scored. Yeah. How much, without giving it away, you know, so in MMA, we've talked about this before, it's hard to determine what makes a 10-8 round. Mm -hmm. 
you could make an argument in this round that Valentina had two very impactful submission attempts. The mounted, you know, guillotine that looked very significant. And then you have a, a, almost a locked up arm bar that she's saved by the bell. Yeah. To me, that could have been a 10 8. Now, again, I want to point. Out, if you're a ringside judge, which we are not, we get the best view possible. Only one of those judges saw that. Potentially. Maybe two. Maybe one saw it from an angle and they thought it wasn't locked in. Um, same thing with the guillotine. They could probably misinterpret how tight that guillotine is. Sure. Was. All right. We, ha- we are now in the fourth round. And I'm going to count down from 448, 447, 446, 445, 444, 443, 441. So, if you are watching from home, you're watching along with us. Um, we once we started play, we haven't stopped it. So, um, Noche UFC. I like DC, but sometimes the stuff he says makes me think that uh, he is. Yeah, I, I'll give you my top two, which is uh, Bisbing and Laura Sanko. Sanko's very good. Yeah, Sanko's very fun. She actually says more educational things, and she has a great way of uh, incorporating scoring into her commentating. Interesting. But yeah, not to say I don't like DC. It's just not my favorite. I feel like the story of this first round... Never mind. First round, you mean fourth round. Fourth round, sorry. The first minute of the fourth round, my bad. So, if you guys talk about, like you were saying, this first minute, not, not nothing is landed clean. Um, it's one-on-one. You know, it's a lot to the air. If a whole round went this way, this is where you're looking at scoring it uh, by fight area control. But because things are actually landing now, now we have to. Look yeah, at I don't think that so effect. far in the first three rounds, you could make an argument that that any of those rounds is um, a draw. Now we're seeing significant strike scores on the screen. Obviously, that's not something the judges would see. I'm not even going to look at it. I don't even know what it means. This is important. So Shevchenko looked like she was arguing, like as if she she could was not, down. But in the she was not. in the rules, you'll see that. It has to be weight bearing. You can't choose anymore to put your fingers down as they used to do in the past. Um, back in the day, you'd be able to post your hand, even just so your fingertips were touching, and they weren't allowed to knee you. But nowadays, if you're putting your hand down intentionally, yeah, you're not a down to You're not down. Beautiful, Ooh. beautiful slam. And Grasso, no. Had a Grasso had a, uh, a near submission attempt here, but I would not call that a submission attempt. Right? Yeah, she just had her back, and you know, there's a there's a moment of her thinking of it, right? Yeah. She had the arm, but she she wasn't fully set up, and they're both standing again. It is one fifty six, one fifty five, one fifty four. Little slaps to the face it means absolutely nothing, but maybe it demoralizes your opponent, taking that spirit away. And uh, mm. now Grasso is bleeding from yeah. the yeah. left eye. It looked like a, one of those right elbows Shevchenko broke off with. Gave her a nice little cut. That is That would be impact. Yeah. That's a laceration, right? That's stated in the um, impact definition. The Again, audience is uh, behind Grasso, though. Yeah. Again, this event was kind of built for Grasso, right? Um, Mexican Independence Day. Special belt. She's a Mexican champion. There was a special belt for her if she won. Big upset to get it the title. You know. But she was the underdog going in, so better is not necessarily. You know, the, the bookies want Shevchenko to win. Yeah. Big right hand. I, I I do not see any any signs after four rounds 
that Valentina is hurt. Yeah, even after eating about three or four knees off that get up. Yeah, or the thumb. I've I've seen nothing that is that Ooh. says to me a little bit. Yeah, Grasso is leaking a little bit there, huh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Ange has an aversion of blood, and she is really enjoying this, aren't you, Ange? For sure. Does that mean you don't like blood? Okay. Not a blood oh. curly. Uh, rolling to uh, what is that? A heel hook. Okay. And she does. Uh, all right, score. That's interesting, huh? That he said that. Yeah. Who was that? John Anik. John Anik. Mm-hmm. So, guys, if you're watching home, John Anik just said that the champion very much, very much needs a finish if she wants to win this. Yeah. I don't know that that she's behind right now. Yeah, I mean, it's really, um, it's really how you view the fight. Um, again, as we stated before, where where a judge is sitting is all they can determine where they're they're scoring. So yeah. maybe you saw those knees land, maybe you didn't. Maybe you saw that right punch land, maybe you didn't. It's really going to be the ringside judge making the call. Now the people watching like us. We're the start of the fifth round here. We get we get really good view, and we get pretty much every piece of the action. And let's see where we're so at here. So I think that's where we see a lot of fan debate. I feel like the bleeding that Alexa had had an impact on me. Mm. But not on her. And that's round five. Okay. 458, 457, 456, 455. Last round. Final round. And on some people's scorecards on the, the Twitter thing that, that popped up at the bottom left on this ESPN uh, Plus app, um, it looked like some guys were splitting it two and two. Some people had it three one way. Some had it three the other. So this is obviously a close fight in a lot of people's eyes. And that's why I think it's we're a doing close. I think I don't think it's way ahead. Somebody just posted that uh, Grasso should be a should be approaching this round like she needs to finish. But did you also uh, read the one prior where it said Grasso's either up or Shevchenko's up? Yeah, <laughs> or three one Val. So some see it two and two or three one. Very interesting, right? Yeah. And then Anik says Shevchenko probably needs to get a finish to win. So he's viewing it three one. Yeah, but that's the voice of the UFC. That's the voice, right? And they have to create a narrative, right? Does her face hurt? Because it's killing me. <laughs> uh, probably adrenaline is making it not hurt as bad as it will in about an hour after. Oh, fight. yeah. She's going to feel that later. Right now, she probably doesn't notice much. She's bleeding yeah. off to the side. She's probably right? numb. Let's be honest. Yeah. Or it feels just like hot water on her face. Yeah. Like sweat. It feels like she's sweating a lot. How much were they able to stop the bleeding after the? After it the seemed round? pretty, pretty. It seemed effective. good. Yeah, they are. I mean, they, they put a the little, game. little Vaseline, a little adrenaline in there, and. Now this is a controversial round. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit after the end when we score it. I feel like Alexa looks more physically fucked up, but she looks more in the game at the same time. Mm. Shevenko's starting to look eepy. Mm-hmm. For those at home, that's a Gen Z version of the word sleepy. Yeah. Yeah, eepy. 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 Two minutes left. 
156, 155, 154, 153. But I feel like it, it's kind of hard to tell the energy level of Alexa, too, because she's bigger. Like, I feel like she just moves a little bit slower, but she's also bigger. Right. Is she bigger? Same I, weight, but you can tell. Like, she's I, I'm different. A, I'm a terrible judge. <laughs> you think for, she um, looks thicker? She so looks thick important. with a oh. couple C's. So what happened there? That's a big yikes. So uh, Valentina went for a throw, and it failed. As they and she, she lost her. She got her back. She gave and off to her she back. She gave her back, which is how Grosso finished uh, Shevchenko in the first fight was um, Shevchenko threw a back kick, and Ooh. then she hopped on her back. So. I mean, Valentina is not defending. She's covering, but she's not. And now we have an attempt on a rear naked choke. Now, again, our angle is not great. We can't see it under the chin. A judge may be able to see it under the chin. If or there's they a may judge not. sitting there, I, but I don't Imagine know. Imagine a judge on the far side of the ring, the complete yeah. opposite. And she's out of no, that. She's, she's still got a uh, – Grasso still has a, a body triangle and has her back. Yeah. A little warning for the back of the head. I didn't see it land to the back, but – Yeah, I didn't either. The ref's going to have the best view of that. Oof. And it does look like Shevchenko's bleeding a little bit from the nose. It is tough to tell, but yeah, it does seem. That could just be. No, it looks like she's bleeding yeah, a little bit from the nose. Blood. It's and her from blood. her mouth. The white was just such an unfortunate choice. And there's a hole in her pants and a very unfortunate Is that a spot. hole? I saw that too. I don't know if hole. that's a hole or. That was a hole. Bit of a face crank attempt. This is how she got her in the first with the face crank. And they run out of time. And they both get up very confident. Valentina very confident. Grasso does not maybe look as confident. Valentina looks very confident that she won. All right, let's score that. I feel like this definitely changed from the first time I watched. Really? Yeah. Man. Okay, so then you, you add up your two numbers. Uh, you add up all the numbers on one side and all the numbers on the other side. That's where you get your score. And I'm going to go to the calculator because I'm uh, not known for my mathematics skills. It's not our job as judges to actually do the tallying. Like I said, every round, someone will come by and pick up your scorecard, and that goes to a person, an official, who is – keeping track which for the pro at the pro level right at the pro at level, the amateur yeah. level you, i definitely have used my calculator before yeah it's a uh, it's less um strict i would say as an amateur judge all right i have calculated the score this is fun this is a fun one Okay, so I will. At f I'm first. What I'm going to say to you is, I'm going to give you the the official scores initially. Okay. So the uh, Sal De Amato originally scored this fight 48-47 for Val Val Valentina Shevchenko. Uh, ooh, any idea how to pronounce that guy's name? Oh yeah. Um, Into the mic. I am going to butcher it, but I will do my best. Junichiro Camijo. Okay. We're just going to try that one. Uh, scored that 48-47 Grasso. And Mike Bell, this was a controversial one, scored an actual draw, 47-47, to cause a draw. So that's we have a split draw there where one went one side, one went the other side, and Mike Bell scored it. Um, do we want to do the ultimate score for everybody now, or do we want to do round by round? How do we want to do this? I say we do ultimate score. Okay. Rich Grendel, how do you score it? Save me last. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Angeline, Ange, how do you score it, Ange? I did 46-46. 46-46. 46-46. 46-46. 46, 46. 46, 46. 46, 46. Is that, does that even math? I didn't, I didn't think so, actually. I'm assuming there's two 10-8 rounds in your score? Three. Three 10-8 yeah. rounds. Okay. Three. So you, you scored it a real draw. Yeah. Wow. Paul, where'd you go? <sighs> okay. I scored two eight ten rounds there. Okay. 
Um, and so I gave it 47 46 for Valentina Shevchenko. Interesting. Where do you got for 46. me? I have, and I feel like I really want to redo my mouth on this, but I have it 47 47. Wow. I have a draw as well. You, wow. Yeah. So this, I, yeah, I, I, I want to point this out. Interesting. I want to point this out. How draws happen are close fights. That's first and foremost. You don't get a draw in a dominant fight. You get a draw from judges seeing small differences. What you see is what you score. Now, we all saw the same thing, right? Obviously, we're all at different levels of judging, and I'm not going to sit here and say my judge you're is the right. You're, you're like, saying you're right. You're like, we're, we're going off of my scorecard. No, just because I judge doesn't mean I actually judge it the best either. This is the issue with two things. This is the issue with judging, which is a lot of it is subjective. Sure. A lot of your experience plays into you what have a, you see. You have an unconscious bias and maybe a conscious bias at that point. And then, secondly, and my issue is the round by round for MMA. I I You've spoke said about this it. before. Yeah, yes. I spoke on it on the judging episode. The global rules scoring scores an MMA fight as a whole. There's no 10-9 must, there's no 10-8. It's who do you who think, do you think won, won the, the to- in totality? Yeah. All right. Rich, how did you score the first round? I scored the first round 10-9 Shevchenko. I did as well, Ange. Um I said 9 10 so 10 9 yeah yeah exactly what exactly for, for what who i said for the gr- in blue the blue girl grasso blue girl had no 10. valentina shevchenko oh blue. blue gloves i see yeah i was thinking of that okay kid, but i'm gonna right, just write right. their names yeah, yeah so yeah, alexa yeah. was red so we all scored valentina the first round yeah okay i and thought valentina was gonna win after the first round yeah and 10 9 for everybody there right nine, okay yeah, that's easy round two we go into the fight uh rich how did you score round two i scored round two 10 9 grasso the she has the she has the knockdown so she had the knockdown and um she she definitely scored a little bit afterwards but there's like a tier to knockdowns. If you if you get into uh, MMA refing, in which I have not been trained on that, but I've been talked to. Okay. Um, there's like a tier of knockdowns, and you would consider that a, a level one knockdown. Meaning, she got knocked to the floor, obviously, but she was facing her opponent. She caught herself, she and rolled, she was able yeah. to get to her feet immediately. She rolled through. So even though it is a knockdown, how significant it was. Probably the least significant. Yeah, knockdown yeah, yeah. I yeah. see. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to give a 10 9 for Grasso because of the knockdown. And did you score the same way? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 10 9. And again, the half of the round ended with Shevchenko in positions that could have been dominant had yes. she have scored more, I f- but she didn't land enough. Why she gets the 10 9 for me is that after that knockdown, she has, she has like a level one knockdown, right? Mm-hmm. And then Grasso proceeds to give her a, a bit of the beating. Right, yeah. she puts the hands on her. It's unanswered. Valentina comes out of it pretty strong, but there's a there's a moment there where, if, as a referee, I might have started to look like, oh, am I going to call this? Yeah. So I'll give I'll give you that. I almost went to ten eight. Right. You know, if if Valentina doesn't come out so strong for the second part of that round for me, that th- she's headed towards a ten eight round. Yeah. I mean, she recovered really well. Recovery and good. and she she showed that she was not. Trying to give up the fight, she's and then trying to take that round. Are are less than casual. I and gave it a ten eight. You gave it a ten eight. My soul left the chat. Your soul <laughs> left the chat. Okay, why? Why? Uh, I don't know. It was just like I felt more anxiety for Valentina. Like <laughs> the first round, it was, I was like Valentina is winning a little bit. Like I could see that. The second round, I was like, I don't know if homie's gonna make it through. At All some right. Point. All right. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, we go into the third round, um, and as you guys remember, that's a really that seems to be for me at least a very dominant round for Valentina. She gets uh, two submission attempts, so the the very tight um, uh, mounted uh, guillotine attempt. She has what looks like an armbar attempt right at the end. Um, she spends a, a vast majority of the round on top. How did you score that, Rich? I scored that ten eight for Shevchenko. I did also score that a ten eight for yeah. Shevchenko. I thought she was very ahead. I there. also scored the same. Did you? Okay, I did. very cool. Very cool. Okay, cool. So very so. interesting though that we scored that, um, and all the judges that were actually that the judges that mattered, they scored uh ten nine. Now yeah. this is where I think a big issue lies with 
um, viewpoint. Judging ringside is it's hard to see. Can't see. It's, so again, if you're on the far end of that guillotine attempt, you don't know how tight that is. You're just looking at butts essentially. For for the record, um, with the exception of one judge in one round, every judge scored this fight ten nine one way or the other yeah. except for one judge one round so we, we can talk about that a little bit because sure. there's some controversy there i think i think it'd be probably helpful afterwards uh once we finish up talking to our scores discussing what a 10-8 in mma based on the unified rules sure says. Yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely um round four um you know we see uh valentina um come out and uh after really a dominating round how did you score that round for round four uh, round four, I gave it ten nine Grosso, okay. and that was and that was in my opinion probably the closest round. All right, um, I had Shevchenko uh, scoring on the feet. She had some great opportunities. Um, I think Grosso probably just edged her out a little more. Okay. Close round, fair, fair. Ange, round round. Uh, I four. had uh, nine ten, ten for Valentina. Yeah, sure. Ten nine to okay. who? Ah, uh, Valentina. You you gave Ga- Valentina that round. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I actually also gave Valentina that round. Ten yeah. nine. It, it was a, it that was, was a close super round. Close round. Yeah, that was a close round. Did she did she cause the blood in that round? Yeah, that was the round. Yeah. That she caught it so with I the think elbow. I think that elbow for me there was a bit of bleeding there. That's impact. Yeah. Okay, I know that you know injuries around the eyes can be a big problem if that continues to build. Right. It's it's the it's to the side of the eye, so it's not it's not threatening the eye. But for me, that was a ten nine, and I think probably that elbow, that elbow and the bleeding for me was like the, I guess the the highlight of that round for me as a, as a judge. So for me, you know, obviously that was probably the biggest score uh, for Shevchenko in that round. Sure. Um, but what really scored for me were those knees that yeah Grosso the head to the knees of the head yeah um she put on a lot more aggressiveness uh to be effective right that's now we're not going to effective aggressiveness if unless we think it's even yeah right and i do think it was pretty even so i kind of leaned on the uh, effective aggressiveness because she had more moments going for it as opposed to shevchenko score that elbow and that was pretty much how i felt she only scored significantly fair fair so going into the the fifth round um I have uh I have Valentina ahead obviously. Um Ange has Valentina 30 <sighs> What is what is 10 9 and 8? 10 9 and 8. 20 you have 28 for Valentina and then what is this? That's a 10. Oh, no, what is that? Oh. Um, that is a seventeen twenty-seven. This is twenty-eight twenty-seven. So you have, okay, not that that matters much. I was gonna say, isn't this five rounds? How are yeah. we getting twenty-eight out of here? No, no, I'm saying like I was just trying to figure out where we're at. No, I definitely had Valentina winning for like the the first couple rounds. Okay, overall, and then so we go into the fifth. Mm-hmm. The the judges, or I should say, DC, or um. The the commentators maybe are making a case that that Valentina is behind. Yeah, I don't know that you can make that case on paper. Right. Um, and Going then, into that fifth round, it's one and one on okay, my score for sure. But uh, we have uh, Shevchenko with a ten eight round. Okay, right, all right, uh, and then we go into the fifth. How do you score the fifth round, Rich? I scored it ten nine Grosso. Okay. I really thought the the last two minutes of that round where um, Shevchenko made the mistake to go to the throw, got her back taken, the dominance, the duration, and the potential fight ending rear naked choke she went for. Um, Now, we, again, depending on where you're sitting, you may view it differently. But I, I thought there was that one instance where, again, their belly down, Grosso's arm looked as if it could have been under the neck. But it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Hard now, to the say. face crank at the end of the round, not necessarily as tight as it could be. It wasn't like fight sure. ending looking, but it's the attempt, right? The attempt to finish, and we want to favor the immediate over the acute move. I thought up until that last two minutes, it was Shevchenko's round, but she didn't do anything significant to immediately look to finish the fight. So I gave that round a 10-8. 
and I gave that around a 10 8 to Grasso, which, by the way, is, is all where all the controversy is because Mike Bell also gave that around a 10 8 to Grasso. So I guess we can talk more about that. Are you saying that you feel like Valentina did enough in the beginning of the round to make it a 10 9? Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your argument is that Valentina was up 10 9 and that Grasso basically took a two point change. Yeah, swinging it had, from a ten had nine the, per side. Had the next two minutes played out the same as the first three. Yeah, that's a ten nine for Shevchenko. Okay, I get what you're that saying. That last two minutes, she gets her back taken, mm-hmm. potential rear naked choke, multiple punches scored, which probably were more significant as we saw the bloody nose, the yeah. bloody mouth. I that's I think that's why because of the impact of that, I think I gave it a ten eight. Yeah, but, but again, I had Shevchenko up; she was scoring, but it's nothing yeah, to. I don't know. Go if she, I don't know if I'd say she was up to be in the round. I think it was very even. But Ange, where did you score that round? Ten eight uh, for Alexa winning. Okay. All right. So you, you we're with ten eights there. Eight All eight right. Eight. So Rich, what is the criteria for a ten eight round? Give me one second. Yeah, I'm with you. I really feel like if there was one more round, I know that's not how this sport works. I think Alexa would have won the whole fight. Okay. So, we, but really, I think what you're making a case for is that you know we've talked about this before on the podcast is that the UFC is round by round, mm-hmm. wherein uh, other in other organization called One Championship, you're judging the totality of the fight. You're not judging round by round. So you could make an argument and say, well, as the, the, this fight, as the further it goes, the more likely Grasso is to win, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you could make that argument for sure. Um, I, don't, I don't know that she did enough early on. It's, not, it's definitely not a clear... Yeah. I mean, we drew, we drew here differently, right? Yeah. The upset, I don't think, is the fact that anyone was robbed. I think the upset is more so how the scoring played out and how people have differing opinions. And this is why round-by-round round scoring why judging is, is also is difficult. And as we saw in those little Twitter boxes, as if those people's matters more than ours, or maybe they do, maybe they don't, but we saw guys who were literally saying it's 2-2 two and two or it's 3-1. and one. So they're they're not sure. Yeah, they get the same view out we are. They're essentially judging just like we did. They're probably talking with their buddies. They're scoring it as they see it. They think their opinion matters the most because they're UFC fighters. So they're gonna get their scores posted. And again, we saw a lot of conflicting scores I, on those. I experts. am very shocked that we scored it a draw <laughs> here. Like I really very much would have thought. If you were to ask me before we did this, who did you score it when you watched it live? I thought Shevchenko won. Really? Too. Yeah. Really? That's why I said I might be going into this a little bias. And you went from that to a draw. I went from Shevchenko being up 3-2. Um, when I watched it, I didn't give either round anyone a 10-8 round when I watched it live. Yeah. Uh, I actually watched it with my girlfriend, Kina, and she's like, would you give that a 10-8? And I was like, ah, probably not. But re-watching it, yeah. judging it, I felt like... The submission attempts Shevchenko had in round three, that's a 10-8. Again, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. Uh, Do you think that it is uh, kind of off subject but still on the subject? You know, obviously Grasso is the champion. Mm -hmm. Valentina is the defender right? or uh, is the uh, um, challenger. That's the word I was looking for. Um, You know, Grasso keeps the belt. She retains the belt. Because she did not lose, right? She she drew. Do you think that that is fair? Yeah. yeah. There's no winner. There's no winner. Right. But she is considered still the champion. She's still the champ. I think that you can make an argument that after a draw fight, there needs to be a tournament to vacancy. determine. A vacancy in a tournament. Yeah, I, I could see that. Maybe. But again, that's where organizations kind of sure. make their rules, sure. right? So it, that has nothing to necessarily do with like what a commission would choose to do. Do you feel like I after think? five rounds, and not commission based, not whatever, that if you had a draw after five rounds, they should have fought one more? So that's what's so fun about glory kickboxing, right? Yeah, um, they they don't do draws; they yeah. do a sudden death round, which, in my opinion, is the coolest thing to ever experience. If you ever get to go to glory, pray to the fight gods, you get to sudden death because <laughs> it is dope when they're like, "We're going to a sudden death." <laughs> it's like very real. All fights end in death. We just stop yeah. it before that. Um, so yeah, uh, I think yes, and also again, I'm not a big fan of our scoring criteria for unified rules. I think as I'm about to read the 10-8, I think you guys are going to probably agree with me that as they express what they feel a 10-8 round is, could be complicated, could be a little uh, 
bias again and subjective to the person who's interpreting it. All right, do you have that? Yeah. All right, let's go for that. What is the criteria for a ten a round? Rich? Buckle up, guys. It is much longer than impact. A lot of reading. <clears throat> so, again, ten nine round to sum that up quickly is someone has an advantage, but it's not so far to where you felt the fight was uh, on its way. Again. Sure, sure. Okay. So ten eight means a ten eight round in MMA is where one fighter wins the round. By a large margin, a 10-8 round in MMA is not the most common score a judge will render, but it is absolutely essential to the evolution of the sport and the fairness to the fighters that judges understand and effectively utilize the score of a 10-8. A score of 10-8 does not require a fighter to dominate their opponent for five minutes of a round. The score of 10-8 is utilized by the judge when the judge sees verifiable actions on the part of either fighter. Judges shall always give a score of 10-8 when the judge has established that one fighter has dominated the action of the round, had duration of the domination, and also impacted their opponent with either effective strikes or effective grappling maneuvers that have diminished the abilities of their opponent. I'm not halfway yet. Judges must consider giving the score of 10-8 when a fighter shows dominance in the round even though no impactful scoring against the opponent was achieved. MMA is an offensive-based sport. No scoring is given for defensive maneuvers. Using smart, tactically sound defensive maneuvers allows the fighter to stay in the fight and to be competitive. Dominance of a round can be seen in striking when the losing fighter continuously attempts to defend, with no counters or reaction taken when opponents... I'm sorry. No counters or reaction taken when openings present, when openings present themselves. All right, here we go. Dominance in the grappling phase can be seen by fighters taking dominant positions in the fight and utilizing those positions to attempt fight-ending submissions or attacks. If a fighter has little to no offensive output during a five-minute round, it should be normal for the judge to consider awarding the losing fighter eight points instead of nine. Judges must consider giving the score of 10-8 when a fighter impacts their opponent significantly in a round even though they do not dominate the action. Effectiveness in striking or grappling, which leads to diminishing of a fighter's energy, confidence, abilities, and spirit. All of these come as a directed result of negative impact. When a fighter is hurt with strikes, showing a lack of control or ability, these can be defining moments in the fight. If a judge sees, the, sees that a fighter has been significantly damaged in the round, the judge should consider the score of 10-8. Do you feel confident in your 10-8 call? Great question. So rereading that, yeah. in the moment, right now, no. Really? <laughs> I, again, it's, it's in the moment, right, when you're yeah. watching the fight. Now, the view we had from that guillotine, I really felt like homegirl was turning red, and she was not doing much to defend it. That was in round three, right? Correct. That's the round I gave 10, ten eight. I also had a ten eight. We all we all gave that that round a ten eight for Valentina. Yeah. But again, she defended it, but she wasn't on her way out, and she was trying to get out. Now the arm bar, we only got about five or six seconds of an arm bar, and it wasn't extended, so we can't really consider that fight ending, right? It was a good attempt. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Now That's again, hard. if we go global rules, yeah, right. That guillotine may have been the closest to ending the fight of everything that happened in the fight. And that arm bar is considered a submission attempt. If you look at their global rule yeah. scoring criteria, th knockdowns and near submissions are their highest I scoring. still feel confident giving her a 10-8 win in okay. that round. And I still feel confident giving Grass with a 10-8 in the final. Okay. Uh, I, I, you know, obviously now the, they're going to have an immediate rematch. Do you think that that is the right choice? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I'm, I'm totally. Do you? How it. do you feel? I know there's been a debate lately about champions getting an immediate rematch. Rematch, where when there's a big pool of fighters, that maybe that's not exactly the fairest choice. Have you seen anything about that controversy? Yeah, I think. Um, I think the issue probably with that is we've had some champs who are so dominant, like Izzy and Shevchenko. Yeah, uh, Amanda Nunes. Um, they they have a long reign. And I think fans kind of get tired of seeing okay. that. Okay. So they do want to kind of, like you said, see like a tournament style. Like, yeah. let's let's get maybe the next few contenders to battle it, it out. It is interesting that like you do see where like Izzy 
or Valentina. You know, there's p- these people that we they're kind of the underdog for a while. And then when they become the champion, we love it. And then the longer they stay the champion, the more that we don't. The more yeah. they're like, oh, we want these people to lose, you know. There is an, a weird thing as a fan that people do that. I don't I don't know why that is. But I I don't know how much I'm a fan of the immediate rematch. But I do understand that, you know, that this probably with a, with a round like this, you, sh- you can go to a, a Grasso, Shevchenko three. Yeah. Again, I want to kind of emphasize a couple things. We watched it in a unique environment sure, that a judge sure, does not watch. Of course, one hundred percent. When you're watching it live ringside, doesn't matter if it's UFC or a regional show. Um, it's completely different than watching it at home, watching it with your friends. I'm sure everyone listening probably has a unique score of their own. Sure, sure. Um, uh, one that I wanted to point out was the verdict. If you guys don't know what verdict is, it's an app you can download. You can follow their Instagram, learn more about that. But essentially what it does is they keep a global scoring. Sure. So everyone who has the app in live time can judge, and they can put their 10-9 or their 10-8. So I just wanted to kind of go off of the scoring for uh, the, verdict. the verdict. So round one went to Shevchenko. Round two, Grosso. Round three uh, was Shevchenko. 10, 9. This is the majority. This is like the all the people that do this, right? Correct, yeah. And I don't know exactly how many people voted on this. More than 100, probably. It's probably in the thousands. Yeah. It's a pretty popular app. So round three, I scored it 10-8. You scored it 10-8. I right, also. 10, eight. They scored it 10-9. So yeah. a majority of people are not seeing it as a 10-9, but they saw it as a clear 10. Or, sorry, they don't see it as a 10-8, but they saw it as a clear 10-9. Clear 10-9. 10, nine. Uh, no one gave that round to Grasso. Um. <laughs> Round four also went to Shevchenko, and then round five went to Grasso. But again, that was a 10-9 round um, as opposed to uh, a 10-8 round. It's it's interesting that... And and by the way, when you look at their final scoring on... Uh, verdict. Verdict. It separates, right? It's 47.37 for Grasso, 47.67 for Shevchenko. Wow. So even with thousands of people debating, we have a point thirty point difference on the scoring. So though they ultimately have a winner, which was Shevchenko, it is by the thinnest of margins that they've ever had. It's interesting that Valentina Shevchenko and um, on both Sal De Amato's and Mike Bell's scorecard, they're both Valentina's winning on both of those cards until um the the last round till the yeah. fifth round and i've had judges tell me and it doesn't state it in the scoring criteria but i've had judges tell me they consider the last round the most important round and they want to if they if they want they can consider things that happen probably more detrimental um if, in their scoring which i don't agree with because again we're supposed to score round by round treat each round like a separate fight but again in global rules I do think they state that. It's also unfair to say, like, if I wonder how much, you know, if you're judging a five-round fight and you know that you gave, like, look, Mike Bell's wa- looking at this this fight, right? Mm-hmm. And he's he knows going into the fifth round that he, it is 39 to uh, 37. He knows it's 39 to 37, Valentina. If he's keeping track, yeah. I mean, in, in his head, he has he probably has a general idea that he has Valentina ahead. Right. So, I, I, I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? There's been a lot of current controversy about him doing the 10-8. Obviously, Ange and I both gave it a 10-8. You gave that around a 10-9. What, what did Verdict do on that round, 10-9? Uh, I believe it was 10-9. I'll double check 10-9. Right now. But, yeah, it, again, uh, the Verdict score, is take it as what you want. But I like going to it um, – because it shows a large number of people scoring. Um, a lot of controversy comes from judges, so it's nice to see what thousands yeah. of people's scores add up looks like. And again, we're looking at this as a very close, close fight. Yeah. Super close. Everyone saw it close. All um, right. I think they scored it a 10-9 majority of people. Yeah. Final thoughts. and you got anything for me? Baby's first fight. Yeah, baby's first fight. You did it. That, yeah, that, was, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was pretty nice. Yeah. I yeah. think I think again, you scored it a draw, I scored it a draw. You might be better than some judges we've met. You you have no fight experience. I have 20 years. So 
What does that what tell does that you say? about scoring what does that say about fights? fights? <laughs> you actually made this argument once when we were talking about um, point Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. Is that you almost would prefer that your judges be exclusively because you're you're the promoter. If you guys don't know about point Muay Thai, but you are the the Florida IKF representative and you put on a lot of point Muay Thai mm-hmm. events. You said private, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, obviously, but you said one time to me that you almost preferred it when you were able to pick judges that weren't like i guess are not super aware of like striking yeah, yeah so I, I i like guys uh i have a i have a good amount of guys who train kickboxing and sure, Thai. sure. Um, but also i have a crew of my judges who are pretty green to it they're exposed to it in their gym they train it but they never trained a kickboxing fighter they've never trained a muay thai fighter they're they're their glass is pretty empty when it comes to yeah. Muay Thai. So you feel like you can... So I'm the one teaching them how to score, and point Muay Thai is scored on number of strikes, number of clean strikes. So all yeah. I have to teach them is what clean strikes look like, and that's it. Yeah. They, they don't, don't have the bias yeah. of full contact fights, which is you know, focusing on knockdowns, focusing on damage, focusing on effective aggressiveness. Then the number of strikes, which we talked about, but they're only focused on number of strikes. So do you think that today we made a case for why AI should judge all fights? Oh, yeah. 100%, right? So, again, they only use AI in PFL, and it's non-official. It's just, yeah. like, for the entertainment. But if you watch PFL fights, um, I think as a fan, uh, the AI gets it right every time. I think time. AI is going to put us out of business is what you're saying. I'm okay with some businesses being taken over by AI. Fair. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope that you found this informative. I hope that you watched along. Guys, if you um, if you found that to be awesome, if you scored it yourself, go ahead and put your score in the comments, so we can argue it in the comments. Um, as I'll, always, I'll give you free reign to make fun of my score. Um, yeah, same. I will. I will probably argue. So be ready for that. I love talking, obviously. Yeah. So. Also, if you've ever judged a fight at a Walmart parking lot, you can go ahead and give us the details in the comments as well. <laughs> hey guys, I think thank you guys so much. You have a beautiful day, and I hope you all keep training. <laughs>